Okay, so this is what is an Amazon Pearl and what is the Amazon Pearl organization. My name is Mark Keating. I'm the Managing Director of Shadowcat Systems, which is a software consultancy and development shop based in the northwest of England, but we've got clients worldwide. Uh, I'm also the Secretary and Director of the Enlightened Pearl Organization, co-leader of my local Pearl Mongers group, and I do tap dancing on the weekend, but that's not true. <laughs> so, why is it called Enlightened Pearl? Uh, first of all, I'm going to talk about the derivation of the name. A few years ago, I was having a series of conversations with a few people, mostly with Matt Trout, and we were discussing the state of Pearl. Specifically, we were discussing it from 5.6 onwards, and the idea of the fact that we were in a Pearl Renaissance. Uh, the more that we discussed it, and the more that we actually talked through all the different things that were happening in Pearl, it became more evident that the period changed around 5.85. We stopped being in the Renaissance. We started to get a different development in Pearl. It stopped being an explosion of great things happening in Pearl and started to become revolutionary things happening in Pearl. Um, very, very big changes were formed around 5.8. Moose is one of them. It, that's where its roots start in a, in a great way. And not only that, the, the idea of a renaissance started to not fit where Pearl was going to with Pearl version, five, version 10, then up to version 12. It's not the same thing anymore. This kind of reminded me more of the Enlightenment period, which was a period where you had revolutions. You also had um, great changes in thought and thinking. The word enlightened itself also means a modern way of thinking. And enlightenment is a way of achieving, it's an nirvana, it's achieving your aim. So enlightened and enlightenment becomes far more of a metaphorical use for Pearl. But the things that we were actually looking at, what, what were the things that we were seeing was the quite chain, great changes that were happening in the Pearl universe. Uh, if you look at Pearl past pre-5.6 and then past 5.6, that's your nascent period, that's that massive change. But what the things that were changing were mature Pearl. Pearl was developed into an oral language. Five is where people put it as, as an oral language. It doesn't really start to become one and isn't fully one now, but really started to change around 5.6 to 5.8. And then we have CPAN as well, which you know, takes off in such a huge way and becomes uh, so much more important. You get mature programmers. This is not one of them, but you do get mature programmers. Uh, programmers are not just interested in their own achievements and their own aims and their own modules. They're also interested in include, including other programmers into their um, work and into their research. Um, being working with people rather than working against people became important. Um, there were also mature communities where the programmers would bounce together and get together and form projects. And so you have the rise of things like Catalyst, the rise of things like DBIH class, which would not have happened 10 years ago. But they started to happen because the language has started to develop in that way. It was also the fact that CPAN was so huge, I don't think one single person, barring Matt Trout, can actually say they know all the modules on CPAN or know all the developments on CPAN. So you actually found need to be in a community, a community of knowledge and information. But there was still a but. And that book is all due, due to how other people see Pearl. They see us as just being a glue language. They see Pearl spaghetti. And it's entirely based upon one thing. This is one of the best things in Pearl. We all love it. You must do. Do whatever you want to. Do it how you want to. And let's face it, the interpreter will compile it. But it also leads us to <laughs> things such as Leet and lolcats, and lolspeak, and when you get those in code, it's a not a good thing. It's like going onto a forum where people are talking about grammar, and somebody's writing in all capitals with double eyes. You just want to grab them and pin them to a ground. This didn't help our language at all. It led Stephen Little to make up the words, because some, sometimes consistency is not a bad thing. He's American, I'm English, I didn't like the word because and the word sometimes, it, it just, it's bad English. That's not much better, it's consistency is not a bad thing. And this is what we were talking about, that we, you should have consistency in language. Not necessarily just best practices, not everything should be indented, I prefer to use spaces myself, I don't like indents, but I, I was brought up in a Windows environment, indents are bad. Um, but it's not just the best practices, it's doing consistent things really, really well and making sure that they can be transferred onto other projects, onto other pieces of code, reusing your code, 
which you can't do if you don't have a consistent style of doing something that you're sharing with people. All of these conversations didn't happen in one wet and windy weekend in, well, like I said England, but on the last past few days, Pisa, <laughs> they actually were happening in a, a wide range of people. There were people such as Penfold here, um, Stephen Little, who is um, the, the originator of Moose, um, Marcus Rumberg, one of the Catalyst co contributors, all of these people were all having the same sort of conversations. So we got together and decided to call ourselves an organisation, which what that actually trans translates as is they all thought it would be a good idea for me to do all the bloody paperwork in forming an organisation. So, what actually makes an enlightened pill project? What, what is it? What defines it, so to speak? First of all, it's an extension of pill itself. It, it blows the bubble that is pill. It makes pill better. Um, it can, in fact, be even things that contribute to the core of Pearl itself. It's stable and production ready. And what we mean by that is that it's in production. It's, it's being used in the real world environment. There are clients using it. Not only that, the clients are using it using the same, different clients are using the same version of the basic code. There are a lot of tests written for it. Quite a lot of tests. Anybody who works in modern Pearl projects knows that the number of tests has increased over the years. I think since 5.6, definitely. There's more and more tests. It's basically test-driven development. But what I like to think about with the Light and Pearl projects is it's also, and this is actually continuous software integration, is test-driven deployment. You deploy a, a staging candidate. That is then tested by quite a lot of the core people. But it's also tested by anybody who's using it. So Catalyst 5.10 would be tested by everybody before it becomes the, as a release candidate, as the one in staging, before it becomes actually released to the outside world. Thousands of tests are done on it. Patches are actually contributed back into it, and then it's deployed once it's working. And after it has been deployed, it is still tested, and patches are still welcome, and patches are still rolled back into it. And everybody really gets an update. It sounds almost obvious to anybody working in modern Pearl projects that you should do this, but it's not been the case in the past. It's about having communities of people who are in touch, IRC channels devoted to it, mailing lists that, that are there for everybody, a common location for people. It's about producing documents, and perhaps producing documents that are up to date and relevant would be really nice, but it's about producing documents for people to get into the projects and making sure that they're uploaded. And perhaps even having somebody who's the maintainer of the documents. Um, DBIH class is a, a good example of this, because it has Jess Robinson, the mighty castaway, who basically just does all the docs and makes sure they're written for DBIH class, making it, but its docs one of the best that you'll find in any of the projects. <clears throat> it's also about having an architect working inside your project. Again, it's something that's possibly overlooked as people scramble to get the next release done is that where is it 10 releases from now? Where is it 20 releases from now? How do we deprecate the current feature set and be using this new feature set? Long before Catalyst went to Moose, around 18 months or so before it went to Moose, it was being decided that it was going to Moose. Where they were already working towards that and they were already working out what features they were deprecating from Catalyst to go to Moose and what features in Moose needed to be there to make Catalyst work inside it. That was done because people were looking that far forward. There were architects working in it. And having these architects in different projects, people who will look that far ahead, means that they can be collaborative. Moose changed with, with Catalyst. They didn't exist separately and then suddenly go, let's move. That didn't happen. It was a slow process. It's also about keeping repos. Now, everybody uh, seems to argue with me sometimes about the fact of putting everything in a repo. I tend to put video and big binary files into a repo on the notion that you're only ever going to download it once. How often are you going to change it? Um, so it doesn't really matter. Added to that, you have then got that resource there in a, for a long period of time. You can go back and go, let's change that big binary file because we need to. So what aren't Enlightened Pearl projects? Well, they're not really a toy or a hobby. Um, as soon as you're starting to develop stuff, something that's going to be released to a client base, as the minute that somebody actually puts it to a client, it starts being a toy or a hobby. 
Um, Matt has his great anecdote about the fact that when he was writing DBIH class, he wrote it as a sort of intellectual puzzle to solve a particular intellectual problem. It didn't become a project until somebody turned around and said, I've got this working for a client, and we have this problem with it. And I think his word for it is expletive, 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 you did what? And then he realized he had to push it to CPAP properly, and he had to find people to help him maintain it, because he suddenly had this realization that he no longer was doing a toy or a hobby or an experiment or a prototype. He actually had a commercial piece of work. And this is how you should look at the, the stuff that you're developing in projects. They are commercial. If they are being used in commerce, that makes them commercial. It doesn't matter whether you chose to or not. They became that way. And if you don't want to maintain them for that, then you should find people who will maintain them for that. That's the only way that you can actually push it forward. Even if you want to give up and say, I'll just be the author, you are maintaining, that's another map troutism. Um, <laughs> <laughs> don't declare anyone. I mean, it's, it's even worse these days. It's, this would be a neat idea. Why don't you implement it? That's right. Well volunteered. <laughs> okay, it's also not Pill 6 and Pill 5. There are some feature thieving going on, but it really is not Pill 6 and Pill 5. It's also not the biggest language on the block. I, I'm very tired of people saying PHP sucks because of this, Ruby is shit because of this, Python is crap because of this, Perl is better than Morgan because it doesn't do those sucky things. And you get the same from Python and Ruby people and Java people. It doesn't matter. You shouldn't be looking at languages that way. If you're a good programmer, you're already going to be a polyglot. You're already going to know more than one programming language. And you're going to know what everybody else knows about good programming. You steal. You steal as much as you can from those other languages. If they do something more elegantly, find out how it's done, bring it into Perl. Then we do it that elegantly. And then they can't say how shit we are for not doing that thing. <laughs> so, what are our aims? First of all, we want to create support material and to create support matrices around people. So that can be organizations, IRC channels, mailing lists. If you can't supply them yourself, you'll find that people will be able to. Um, I think Shoutcat is known for being a, a real, real good mailing list to virtually any project and anything. Especially if we find it interesting. Yeah, you can have a mailing list. Do you want some repo space? Yes, you can have it. That's what it's all about. Um, it's creating installers. My dream is one day that we will have an installer. It's, it's a terrible thing, but have an installer where you can download a package file. And like a PHP project, it will unravel. And suddenly you have webmail that gives you an email that tells you that you have webmail. And you go to a web interface and go click, click, click. Bang, pull project. Nothing more needed than that. If Perl is on the server, it will just run. We will end up with people like the Rails community, like PHP community, who are actually designers, not developers, working with our projects. Exactly what we want. No, we don't want them developing, of course. It's to find and get grants for people. To give money back into people doing the work. It's often very, very hard just to continually do something on your own time for no money. It would be nice if we actually got some money into some projects. It will help if we want to do research things that are not perhaps the way the project is going. And it's about enlightening the managers, the bosses and the technical man managers, the executive managers, HR, and other people in the organization who are all part of or, or work with, and say to them, look, this may be a free language. But that doesn't mean that you could consider that you don't do anything. You should be a part of this free language. And in fact, you can support this free language and you support the community as well. And it's important that you should do that. Because without it, the free language may go away. And it's going to cost you a heck of a lot more to replace it. Putting all these people in the melting pot is about the final thing that you can do. So, why should you go? Well, if you're in the industry, the words are development and focus. And this is what we should be shouting about. Um, you could actually say that you want a certain thing in a project and you want to push it that way. If you're in the industry and want to give us thousands of pounds to do that, we'll find the people to do it. I bet half the people in this room would take it from them quite happily. But it's also about saying that you're a part of this organization, you're a part of this movement in Pearl, and you're supporting these people in Pearl. It's you're support supporting the people who are actually developing the next set of software that your company is going to rely on. If you're an individual, you can shape the organization. There are two forms of shaping our organization. One is called a special membership, one's an ordinary membership. 
Americans particularly have a problem with this uh, because they see specialists better than. Whereas in England, specialists seen as less than. <laughs> Think special needs, special case, special head case. Whereas ordinary is just a regular job. An ordinary member in the organisation has to pay to be in the organisation. But they get a vote. They also get to suggest grant bounties. They also get to suggest working groups and can run working groups. And pretty much if they say, this is a really neat idea, and they get two other people in the organisation to say, it's a really neat idea. It goes with it, and everybody else goes, yeah, that's a good, go with it. It's a neat idea, go and do it. So you're actually part of the actual shape of the organisation in the future. There is no set group of people saying, this is how it will be done five years from now. There are all the members who vote, and if they want it to change, the organisation will change. It's fluid and dynamic, and it's entirely around those people who make up it. So what have we done so far? Well, first of all, we released a list of our core projects. These are the ones that we think satisfy Enlightened Pearl at the moment. That was actually done a couple of years ago, and I think it's about ready for an update. It's very hard to add new projects into this, because how many big projects like Catalyst have come out in the past two years and do the same number of things? Not that many. But there are some that are actually on this sort of debatable, they're probably going to be in the list. As soon as they get to a certain point, they're going to be in there. Padre is a good, strong contender. They're not close to being in there yet, but they're a good contender. There are the hackathons that we've had. We're part of the Nordic hackathon. There was a special Enlightened Pearl hackathon at the Nordic Pearl Workshop. There's going to be one at the London Pearl Workshop, hopefully. There's definitely one going on privately at our company offices. And anybody who wants to come to Lancaster for a weekend, you know, please do. 14th of November, we're having a private hackathon. There's a couple of things we decided we're going to hack on and uh, try to work them out then. There is also the actual workshops themselves. Matt has given several talks at, at various places. At um, Yaxi, there's been, he did a whole day with Ash Berlin on the Latin projects. At London Pearl Workshop, he's going to do another hour and a half, two hours, probably covering just one project to a higher level, maybe Moose, maybe Catalyst, he hasn't yet decided. There's the Extended Pearl Co, which is in development, there is already the extended pull code, but the idea is, is that one day we will have an installable module that will install your, the best pill modules and, and libraries that are used commonly. This is all made up from, and it's partly Tash Kenshaw at the moment, and it's Peregrine's idea that all the people using Pearl in big projects, companies who are part of the organisation, can say which modules they use all the time. And what we do from that is we compile a group of core modules that just get installed and we build an installer for it that just goes bang, it works, and away you go. There's the Ironman competition, which if you're not part of, you should be a part of, and if you're not reading, you should be reading. It's, it's fun, and uh, there are these rude little badges. There are grant bounties. We have released a set of grant bounties. Two of the three have been taken. The other one is up there for anybody to take. If they want to actually do it, they can earn themselves £400. There is Bug Tracker, which is the thing we're probably going to be hacking on in November and December, which is part of the Pearl 5 core. And this was an idea suggested by um, Nick Clark of London.pm, uh, who suggested we should have bounties for solving problems in Pearl, the Pearl 5 core that are paid for. The Pearl Foundation have actually agreed to actually do this, and they will be giving bounties out, but we've got to make the bug tracking system work first, um, which is what we'll be hacking on. So if you do want to come to Lancaster, that's what we'll be doing. And even though I get my five minute warning, I left some time just in case you want to ask some questions. So, any questions? So, you're all going to go out now and join the Enlightened Pearl organization, aren't you? You're going to say, Yeah, I want to give you yes, some money. <laughs> By the way, if you want to grant with the organization, you don't actually have to be a member. Anybody can take up the grants, it's not required. Okay. If you're also interested, I'm also at the moment trying to gain some people to do some Perl articles and writing Perl articles. So you don't actually have to have as much comp competence as you think you might have because you'll be working with at least one or two other people. Write an article for Perl that will probably end up on the register. Um, just come and see me and to give me your name. Dakar has already said, yeah, I, want to, I, I love doing this. It's my life. <laughs> so anybody else, just, just come along. Thank you very much.